are back, everybody. Welcome to the Rhino and Kurt Show, coming to you live from Room 6 of the Shoney's Inn in Lugol. Today, we are going to discuss why we were out last week. Uh, the mighty, mighty Blue Devils make their return to the Final Four. We're going to talk some white people trends. We're going to talk the loss of a rock legend. Um, and we're going to go into some uh, pizza topping. Rhino, what is up, man? I'm pumped. I know you Paul. I'm glad we finally broke the trend. The, our white people trend was Duke losing the game before a podcast. So, uh, you know, we finally broke that. Duke lost to uh, North Carolina uh, to end the season and then lost to Virginia Tech in the uh, ACC championship game. And I was worried last night early that uh, Arkansas was going to make it three in a row. But I tell you, man, Duke's got some guys stepping up, uh, scoring some points, playing some minutes. Uh, Mark Williams is playing really good down low. He's kind of hard to, he's kind of hard to match up with because he's so long. Um, you know, and, and Pablo and, and Roach and all those guys are making shots. Give me your breakdown of what Duke has done different, maybe in the last month, and why they made it to the Final Four. Where at a time there, we weren't sure they was gonna make it. You know, out of the maybe the the, the, the thirty two. Yeah, I think you know, me and you talk about all this a lot, but I think in the time of the one and done, you know, it's good to throw in all these great pieces, but I don't feel like they ever get the time to gel. Like I've been saying that Duke's got the players, but they're not all hitting on all cylinders at the same time. And that seems to be clicking all of a sudden. And coach K seems to have the confidence in them. And like last night was real balance, which is what I wanted to see. Yeah. I mean, I see, uh, let's see one or more. And one of the other starters has been there uh, a couple of years, I think, um, you know, you Williams. always yeah yeah there you go you always got and ropes yeah you you always that's the only problem is like the, the the zion team and the barrett and uh cam reddish class you know if they would have came in with the class that was there for two years before and they all played together i've always said that like if kentucky had all their guys at one time they'd have 25 players you know and it at some point that'd be some senior leadership. Well, basically what, you know, Reddick and Brand and all those guys did, they stayed. And as those classes came in, it was, a you know, you had some youth and he had some shooters and she had some down. The thing is, like, when times get tough, there's no freshman in, in, the, in the one and done era that can really just pull his team up. But uh, Duke's got a little bit of experience. They got a lot of confidence. And now they're two games away from, you know, two wins away from, from winning a national tri- uh, title and if you could ever make a 30 for 30 ending for Coach K, this is the way it's, you know, this is the way it's going. Yeah, I guess we're going to see if they have to play North Carolina, which would be storybook, or uh, the other storybook, St. Peter's. So. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of St. Peter's, man, I, I was reading some stuff on them, and, you know, it's we have a story like this about once a decade, a Florida Gulf Coast, uh, you know, some team that gets hot. And I think this is the advantage of those teams, though, is the experience of playing together. You know, they know what to do in this situation. Just like back in the day when Princeton wasn't near as good as a lot of teams they played, but they played together so long. They knew to, you know, that back cut, you know, that back cut to the basket. They knew how to uh, play defense. Um, this team. Uh, St. Peter's in their opening game this year, I think it was 425 students or 525 people in attendance for their first home game this year. Mm. Dude's got dude's got 425 people standing outside three days beforehand. You know, it's a it's a crazy thought that a school so small, basically a, a Midlands Tech, if you will, uh, has made it uh, one game away from the Final Four. Yeah. Also, another story is. Uh... You remember kind of toward the start of the season to the middle of the season, we talked about how the ACC was down and now you got a chance. You could possibly have three of the final four ACC and everybody hyped up the SEC and they're they not suck. there anymore. They garbage. SEC is garbage. <laughs> SEC sucks. Tennessee, Kentucky, Auburn, 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 Auburn LSU, they all suck. This is the bottom line. It's so that, that's what makes it even worse for South Carolina is not being able to compete with uh teams like that that suck but uh yeah you talk about it miami in my opinion uh not a top 10 15 team in the country i've seen them take beatings like multiple beatings of uh double digits this year somehow jim laranega 
has got it turned on. And North Carolina, man, uh, you know, that's a that's a moderate team most of the year. Not great, not doing anything. Uh they look good now. They look great now. They look unstoppable down low. They got shooters, point guards uh, doing his game. Um, so you're right. This could be an ACC uh, final and um, gets back to where we, where it was when we was growing up, you know, when it was all ACC. It was ACC uh, all the time. And the Tobacco Road pretty much ran college basketball. And, and for the past little while, it hadn't been that way. But solid performance by those three. Or to say the least, um, I don't know. What, I don't know about the St. Peter's. I guess I, we keep doubting them. Th- I thought they would have lost to Murray State, but they just keep on coming. So, a lot of stories. Uh, a lot of uh, could be a lot of <coughs> endings right here. Um, this weekend and then going into next weekend. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, definitely making for a good ending of Coach K's career, even if. They don't even go any farther than this. Nice to make it to the final four. You know, they didn't lose second round of Michigan State, stuff like that. Would have been would have been bad. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it went the highs of the highs of getting to the, you know, losing to North Carolina, and that's the low of the low, no matter what. You lose to North Carolina. And then the rebound, and then lose the ACC championship, and then a rebound and win the championship would be uh, great. Maybe Coach K's granddaughter can get one of those national championship T-shirts to cover, oh, cover that midriff. Know, yeah, uh, a full shirt. She'll probably uh, cut the yeah. bottom off. I'm sure after they get through cutting down the net, she'll take the scissors and cut the stomach out of it and, and stand over there like the emo punk. Did, but anyway. Did you did you give her your – did you give her that Stephen Berry's uh, Duke jacket? No, man, I still got my Stephen Berry's. I got my Duke and my Oklahoma, my Ohio State. I'm saving them for special occasions. Yeah, I like that uh, <laughs> that 80s. A rough, wind-breaking, waterproof, a uh, hard leather jacket. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's gonna be a topic of discussion. I'm surprised we hadn't seen more threads about that, but uh, for some reason, or nicer than we are, I guess. <laughs> Coach, Coach K's family can't get it together on a dress code. I'm sure if his players walked in the game, you know, before the game with a with a midriff shirt like Russell Westbrook, Coach K would flip his lid. But all right, so that's we will see what you got. Who you think is gonna win it? I mean, you thinking Duke? You think Duke's gonna take it down? You got to say it, right? I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't see why not at this point. Let's go. All right. Uh, as opposition and, and only opposition, I hope Duke wins it too. But I, I'll go with Jay Wright and Villanova. Uh, that's a solid team as well. They won two, I think, out of the last five years, maybe. So uh, I'll go that way. I'm not going North Carolina. I don't like North Carolina. Can't stand North Carolina. Don't like Miami either. So. Uh, just to be the devil's advocate, I'll take the uh, I'll take that other matchup and I'll take Villanova to win it all. I feel like I also have a chance at some cash if they win. Duke wins as well. Looks oh like. man, look at here. You gotta beg this man to play the daggone bracket. Man will never put want to put a dollar out now. He's about to pull the whole he's about to pull the whole bank in if, if a Duke wins. Because everybody else was on Gonzaga uh, for the most part. The majority was on Gonzaga and uh, a couple other teams. I, I took Illinois like a fool. I think some people took Tennessee. Got to know Tennessee ain't just ain't gonna do it in March, but uh, yeah, Curtis win the uh, the Rhino and Curtis podcast bracket challenge if uh, Duke holds on and wins it all. Oh, also, also last night, as soon as the game was over, I got an email from uh, Vivid Seats for Final Four tickets. Man, you can get looks like the cheapest seats about six eighty. Man, you down? You ready to go? Where is Final it? Four and championship? Where New Orleans? Hell yeah. It's right out Mardi Gras. Let's get you know how many food spot. reviews you can do in, in um New Orleans right now? Yeah, if you but if you don't make it out, you can't post none of them. <laughs> I I'm not going to New Orleans. So good luck. I'm sure you can find I'm sure one of the sell ones will uh, ride with you, a uh, shotgun down there. And y'all can or maybe Hoffman. Y'all can y'all can uh, meet in New Orleans and handle that. But we're gonna see how it goes. They play tonight. Uh, the other two sides, other two matchups play tonight, and then we'll know who our final four is. And uh, next week, we'll have a Saturday uh, final four and a Monday national championship. So we'll have a Sunday show, and we'll be able to either say yeah or nay on Duke or North Carolina playing in the finals. The reason we were not on air last week is uh, we made a little trip to Clemson. We had a little reunion tour. It's been five years since uh, 
the group has been together. And uh, boy, we could tell it. Um, you know, we went up to Clemson, um, hung out. Everybody kind of trickled in. Some had to work. Some had to work half days. So me and Kurt got up there early. We stopped at a place called The Smoking Pig. I'm give a quick review there. Uh, right in there in Pendleton, probably about five minutes from the Clemson campus. One of the best uh, barbecue joints I've been to far as the ribs. Um, the whole setup, they had an outdoor setup, they had an indoor setup, um, you know, good setup. Brisket was good, ribs was good. I think Kirk got the regular barbecue, uh, pulled pork with uh, sweet potato fries. Good spot. I've, ne- I've been by there a hundred times going to Clemson games, but it's always crowded on game day. Best ribs I've had. I got the glazed ribs. I also got the brisket. I also got the pulled pork. All of it was good. Potato salad was good. Banana pudding's good. Sweet tea was top notch. Uh, what you think about the smoking pig, Kirk? Um, I thought it was great, man. I thought it was a cool setup in there. Um, I also got the banana pudding, which was great. It looks like a cool little setup outside with cornhole bowl, cornhole boards and a bar set up. So you could basically spend the day out there. I mean, there's lot, lots of cool stuff on the wall. Um, Nick Saban had even been there, um, had a quote on the wall. I don't like Gamecocks. Kiss my ass. Nick Saban. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what that pretty much sums it up. You go to Clemson and even Nick Saban don't like the game calls. Yeah. He even eats at the smoking pig. So we ate there. We ended up at the house. Uh, we flipped the TV on, watched some of the uh, opening opening rounds, and uh, hung out, shot the bull, uh, went down to the uh, Charleston pub, whatever it is, uh, Charleston pub, hung out there. Um, if you've never played credit card roulette, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's, a it's a stupid game and you shouldn't play. But, uh, you know, I thought it'd be a great idea for all of us to put our debit cards in a hat, and let the waitress pull it out. And uh, she did. And she pulled out the one from Mid Carolina Credit Union, which was mine. <laughs> and uh, so a little a shrimp po' boy and a couple of natty lights cost me about $110. So that's just the way things go for me. That's, that's the stuff that happens. Uh, but anyway, after we left there, it was early. It was about 8 o'clock. So we decided to roll over to Tiger Town Tavern. And uh, this is where we, this is the beginning of the end um, for realizing that you're not uh, in your thirties anymore. Uh, went over there, uh, hung out, definitely the oldest group in there, but that was a unique thing that we watched uh, that we kind of just stood near uh, the punching bag game. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these in a place you've been, but it was the most, uh, busiest thing that was in this whole bar um and each seems like everybody who came in took a punch at if you ever seen it i don't know if you hadn't seen it uh you put in your dollar push the button the punch your bag drops down and you try to hit the thing and get as high a score as you can and there was three little guys it looked like uh it looked like a little irish mob guy it looked like the fourth jonas brother and then another guy who probably watches a lot of Harry Potter. And they uh, just spent, probably spent about 50 bucks. And I, I don't think he could get to a thousand. Nine ninety eight was the most we saw. And, uh, you know, they was, as they, as they drank, they got kind of goofy and was kicking it and head butting it and elbowing it. And it was quite an interesting uh, to observe observation. But then even that, Another group comes in, four guys, four girls, and the first thing they do, they're a little older, probably in their early 30s. First thing they do is walk up, and each guy takes a swing at the uh, punching bag. So I don't know if this is just a – I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's a macho thing or ego thing or – what was your take on the uh, – what was your take on the punching bag game, Kurt? I feel like those have been around for years. They were they were around yeah. when we were out and about. Um, right. All I know is one of those girls I wouldn't mess with. She had a hard, <laughs> nice punch. And that little 130-pound guy, man, he looked like Floyd Mayweather or somebody in there, man. He had, he had some uh, – he had a punch on him. I wouldn't have messed with him. Yeah, the Irish monster, he had to zip up one of the jacket <laughs> to the neck, and he would just take the straight – but we kind of figured it wasn't a whole lot to it. We talked and talked and talked, and uh, so Kurt and uh, Jared – challenge to see i said i could backhand that thing and get 900 so i backhanded it and got 897 to prove that it ain't really uh it ain't really a great scale of you know of strength or, or your punching ability but 
just an interesting thing to observe that guys walking in, putting their dollars in there and, and trying to hit it hard as they could for whatever reason. I have no idea. Um, Another observation anyway. was that we were the oldest people in there. Yeah, after at 10 o'clock, <laughs> you realize, I think Jared made a point that, you know, we were the oldest. And with me and Jared having gray beards, we looked the oldest. So we left out of there and went back to the house, um, you know, hung out, watched some, watched some more March Madness, rolled down memory lane from uh, the Lugolf days and stuff, and went to bed right about, you know, around 2 o'clock or so. And that's when the next day is you realize you're not as good as you once was. Because all we uh, all we really wanted at that point was some DoorDash McDonald's. I needed some grease, I needed some sweet tea uh, to rejuvenate yourself for a long Saturday. Yeah, I think uh, another big takeaway is me, at least me and you, we hardly ever touch alcohol anymore except for maybe like a something like this or special occasion or whatnot it's not like it's a common thing for us anymore so i feel like at least at least me i was i was pretty proactive or at least trying to be like i wanted saturday morning to be a a good thing and not a bad thing so i think i had two mixed drinks at dinner and i was gonna have one at the, the tiger town and i think it was eddie or somebody kept putting the red bull and vodkas in front of me i think i ended up with like five five or six mixed drinks which scared me so brian had something i'd never seen before something called liquid iv which is something you mix in your drink i guess to to hydrate you and also i had a gatorade and three bottles of water so saturday morning i was feeling pretty good except for tired for staying up till 2 30 yeah you can't you can't hang out with liquid whiskey eddie uh very long without him uh whiskey r- eddie something around. Else. so anyway you know, we get up Saturday and we use the DoorDash. First time I'd ever, you know, we'd ever really done part of that. We'll have a segment here later about the convenience and the price. It comes up again later that day as well. But uh, anyway, so, you know, we left there. We got up. Uh, we uh, we decided we were going to go uh, eat before the baseball game. We went and watched Clemson play baseball. And uh, I realized one thing, uh, on game day, a game day environment at SO Club is pretty good. Pretty good spot. One of my favorite spots to go game day. Uh, Non-game day, uh, just a normal day. SO Club might be the worst place I've ever been. It was <laughs> There was no redeeming quality to their food, to their service. Uh, we had to wait about 30 minutes to get a table. We got one. Uh, orders were messed up. Food sucked. Took 15 minutes to get our food. Uh, at the question, like, hey, you know, where'd you have to get our drinks from? You know, the gas station or something? And just like, nah, I spilled them all over me, which she did not, obviously, because her clothes were clean. And, and one of them had ordered a Bloody Mary, so obviously it would have been red everywhere. And uh, Long story short, man, everything about the SO Club sucked. It doesn't take away from the game day environment. It's cool on Saturdays and after the game with a band. But if you're in Clemson, man, avoid the SO Club for lunch at all costs. Uh, that place sucks. Just throw that out there. We went and watched a baseball game. Pretty good day. Uh, weather was good. Baseball was bad. Clemson lost. Um, and then came back, uh, walked back to the room, which we stayed right up, right up, uh, right above the SO Club, not far walking distance from the stadium, so it wasn't too bad. But you could tell uh, the Saturday afternoon from the Friday afternoon was different when you're 45. Uh, there was no anticipation of uh, anything alcoholic. All there was was really a, a bunch of food, and uh, so you know we ordered a we ordered some pizza from the Mellow Mushroom, which uh, I have to say is good pizza, but it, it is the that's the uh, ninety three octane gas of pizza right there, buddy. That's the most expensive pizza in the land. There can't be any more more expensive pizza in the land than that. But it was good, and uh, you know so we sat around and uh, we we rehashed. Then the, the early 90, mid 90s in Lou Golf. And I had a good time. Ended up going to sleep. Me and Kurt busted out there early that morning. Uh, yeah, great time. Like, like, like you said, I, I had nothing but water, coffee, and uh, soft drinks Saturday. And we were staying up watching basketball. I was, I was struggling to make it to 11 o'clock. I was nodding out on the couch. You were making fun of me. 
Yeah, Kurt looked like that little kid, you know, that they want to go to sleep, but they, they won't let it, they won't <laughs> give up. You know, they keep rubbing their eyes, throwing their head. Kurt was sitting down there, and uh, finally the game's ended, and uh, me and him hit the, hit the sack because we had to get up early. Everybody else wasn't that really keen on getting up early and leaving. I think they was just going to take it easy and, and, and head out, but uh, good time. Good weekend. We was home before noon, and and uh, needed that time to recoup to get back home for a Monday. You got anything else on Clemson weekend? No, nah, I think it was a great time, man. Look, we need to do that more often. Uh, no reason we can't. That's true. Maybe That's get true. one true. during football season. Yeah, definitely. We we'll definitely do that. All right. So let's break down. We do a we do a year breakdown uh, every week that we're on here and we're up to 1992, which is another, uh, good, good year for Duke. Uh, Christian Leitner wins the Naismith award and Duke beats Michigan, uh, for the national championship. What you got? Yeah, on this, what you got this on is also the, the 30th, 30th anniversary of the shot against Kentucky. Right. So one of the best, uh, basketball moments of my life. I remember pretty vividly, um, me and my buddy, Chris Langhorn from Sumter high, we had just gone seen a uh, white man can't jump earlier that day. Just got home from that. That movie had just hit theaters. Uh, so it was, you know, that movie was heavily promoted during March Madness that year. So we watched that. Came home, Duke, Kentucky. I know we went to the the little outdoor courts at Alice Drive Middle School. Played basketball all day the next day. So great, great, uh, great, um, seventeen year old experience for me back then. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a like you know. We're about to, you know, a back-to-back -back championship, which we don't see very often these days. Duke was in the mix a good bit back then, especially those Leitner and Grand Hill years and going forward. So, yeah, Leitner wins the, the Naismith Award. Duke beats Michigan. They go back-to-back. -back. In the NBA, the Bulls beat Portland 4-2. to two. Really not much to talk about here. If we go, as long as we keep doing this, it's going to be a bull show on the NBA. You know, <laughs> six out of the next, you know, six out of the first eight. Michael Jordan – uh, was the MVP, of course. The rookie of the year that year was Larry Johnson, uh, Grandma Ma, who was uh, who was pretty larger than life around here with Charlotte. And that team, when they got yeah. morning and, and had, you know, Chapman and Reed and uh, Kelly Chapuka, Muggsy. That, Dale they had Curry. Some, yeah, Dale Curry. They had some pretty pretty electric teams around here. You know, you had the, uh, you know, then you had the mascot dunking all over the place. Uh, it was pretty hype, you know, back then when, when the Charlotte Hornets were a good basketball team. It's been a long time from the Bobcats back to the Hornets where they've been uh, competitive, but maybe they're getting back that way. Interesting, your boy, Detlef Shrimp, was the sixth man of the year that year for the Indiana Pacers. So, anyway, a good uh, throwback to a, a good honk, um basketball player that we don't get to talk about very often. Um, really back to, like, uh, the Super Bowl. Redskins beat the Bills 37-24. It's another one of them Bills make it. As much as the Bulls make it and win, the Bills make it and do not win. Mark Riffin was the MVP of that Super Bowl. Uh, Steve Young was the MVP of the year. Um, so Redskins back in Joe Gibbs, you know, I think he got three championships as a coach. Uh, the Redskins were, were something to deal with in the 90s. Uh, the Miami Hurricanes start up that that uh, continued that trend of being the U um, with beating Nebraska 22 to nothing. Um, Gina Toretta, their quarterback, is the Heisman. He continues a trend of Heisman winners or maybe starts a trend of Heisman winners who do absolutely nothing in the NFL. But um, Steve Entman, uh, one of the bigger busts in NFL, is drafted number one to the Colts. A big dude from Washington, to Washington Huskies. Uh, he, I think he ends up tearing up his knee. And he's really ineffective in the uh, in the NFL World Series. Another one of these teams that gets there and can't do it. The Atlanta Braves they lost to uh, Joe Carter and the Blue Jays four to two. Pat Borders was the MVP that year, but had the Braves won, Mark Lemke definitely would have been. He batted over five hundred. Um, that was a that was a great series. Uh, it was just exciting for us. I think that the Braves were actually playing in October. It's something we hadn't seen our whole lifetime. And then we get back to back years of the Braves. And we probably thought in our minds that uh, 
this is going to be, you know, winning, winning World Series is going to be something we do a lot of. And unfortunately, up until last year, we only, we've only seen two. Um, MVP that year was Barry Bonds for the Pirates. Dennis Eggersley, a closer, wins the MVP. He also wins the Cy Young. Greg also Maddox, a nice mustache. Big, big, nice mustache as well. Um, all mustache team up there with Goose Gossage and Raleigh Fingers. Um, Cy Young goes to Greg Maddox with the Cubs. Um, so, rookie of the year that year was Eric Carros for the Dodgers, who I think they won four in a row rookies of the year. They had rookie of the year every year. Somehow they never turned into uh, World Series championships. And Pat Listash, the Brewers were in the American League at this point. He won. I think he led the league in steals that year as a rookie. Um, Pepperdine wins the uh, Pepperdine wins the College World Series. Um, it goes to show you in baseball, man, anybody can win. Pepperdine beat Cal State Fullerton. No big, no big names there, but uh, they won the College World Series. So that's pretty much the major sports. Um, Brady Bow beats the Vander Holyfield to unify the titles. Here's a here's a good interesting fact. Uh, a little throwback to you guys, uh, Page and Rick D's podcast. At the World Championship of Skating, Christy Yamaguchi uh, wins the gold medal in that. I know uh, she gooch. I know she gooch gets a, a name drop, and, and you guys uh, uh, podcast. Interesting. Uh, Phil Mickelson stuff, all this golf stuff going on, talking about money and how much guys make. Uh, Cam Smith made $3.6 million last week at one tournament. The leader on tour uh, in 1992 was Fred Couples the whole year. He led with $1.3 million, which is interesting to show you how much money has come up. Um, Andre Agassi and Steffi Groff both win Wimbledon, which is kind of ironic. Uh, the male athlete of the year um, paid for the Associated Press is Michael Jordan. The female is Monica Sellish. She did not win Wimbledon, but she did win the Australian, the French, and the U.S. Opens back when you could dominate the sport and people knew who you were. Uh, there's a girl, I think the number one player in tennis retired this week, and I have no idea who she is. Like, if you ain't uh, if you ain't Serena Williams or Venus Williams, I don't know. You know who that is? No. Okay. That's what I thought. Kind of what I thought. All right, my man. You got you got one you want to throw in here? Um, yeah, I was just gonna talk about uh yesterday morning, woke up, looked at my phone, and saw that uh Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters had died. And um I wouldn't say I'm a huge Foo Fighters fan, but a fan. And I mean, you're a fan of rock music. They're kind of the they're waving the flag of rock right now, or or were, you know, they're the, the face of it. If there's an award show and there's a rock band there, it's the Foo Fighters and you know, Dave Grohl, obviously from Nirvana, they've been around 26 years or just inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this past year. Um, Taylor Hawkins, you know, started out as drummer for Alanis Morissette and and um, been with the Foo Fighters. And I mean, that they're the two people of the band you always see in interviews. And, you know, they're always seems like seem like good guys, always cutting up kind of kind of the Batman and Robin of rock and roll right now. And um Obviously, the guys had problems with uh, heroin in the past that he OD'd in 2002. And not to jump the gun, but all the stuff you see in the media right now says there was, I think, 10 different drugs present. So the guy was 50 years old, didn't look 50 years old. And and uh, just sad, man. Seems like I watched um, a show of theirs just from last week at Lollapalooza in Chile. And um, it's amazing, man. Just just to be over there and the crowd and their response and the show they put on. And that guy was like animal from the Muppets on the drums, man. All considered one of the best drummers out there. So just sad, man. Just sad. Uh, somebody that has it all like that. Gone. Yeah. I don't know who he is. I mean, I know Dave Roll. I'm not a, I don't know in depth. And I've seen a lot of people doing tributes to it. And I was wondering like, is he the Tommy Lee, the modern day Tommy Lee, or is he uh you know, Travis Barker, is he that? Yeah, he's he's that level. Okay. He's just not noted as noted, I guess. Well I think he for, is noted. Okay. Well for mainstream people like me. I know Tommy, <laughs> I know Tommy Lee, I know Travis Barker. I've never heard of this guy, but yeah, man, it's unfortunate. It's, it's crazy that 
you know, I read that same thing where he uh, overdosed on heroin and was in a coma, I think, for two weeks or something. And man, I, it just seems like 50 years old, the world at your fingertips, you know, still in their prime and their career, selling out, making money. And, you know, you just can't stop doing drugs, man. I just don't understand. Um, we ain't gonna get into this because I'm. This is this could be a, a two part series about you know how that works and uh, it just seems crazy though, man. That so many people with so much talent and uh, it could have longevity wasted on you know heroin or I mean, dude, I'm gonna tell you, man. Unless it's the fountain of youth, man, you ain't putting a needle in my arm. You know, I just I just don't see how you can convince me I want any part of a needle. I don't want to smoke anything or take any drugs. So, uh, you know, much less heroin. It just seems like it's maddening that, that, that so many people die uh, needlessly for, for, you know, this drug addiction. It's crazy. Um, yeah. But, A lot of people, you know, talk about Keith Richards still living and all this kind of stuff. But, I mean, pretty known. Keith Richards hadn't done that stuff in a long time. So, I mean... <laughs> Not yeah, like the stuff still shooting up. Yeah, that's true, man. It's a, uh, you know, it is amazing that guy has. He got high mileage. He's like that, uh, that, that Toyota Camry just got about four hundred thousand miles, but this that still cranks up every time. But it doesn't work that way for everybody. And it's definitely a white person trend. I think you know we could probably get into that. You know, from from pills to uh, some crazy drugs. You know, white people and more and more every. You know, more and more every year um, uh, seem to, you know, I think I read a, a stat that more people in Kershaw County die from overdoses than they did uh, any other cause of death. So it's out of control, man. Don't do it. Don't put no needle in your body, man. It's dumb. Yeah, it's definitely a, I mean, I don't want to get into addiction and all that kind of stuff, but I'm, all that, anything crazy, man, is a young man's game. You got to. You got to know when to get out and just take it easy. Right. And like I said, that's a white person trend, but more uh, likely we could talk about this white person trend is uh, charcuterie boards. You've all seen them. You've been to a party at some point where it's a board, uh, I guess, of uh, meats and cheeses, sometimes fruit, vegetables, um, crackers. Generally for me, what I think about is like an adult Lunchable uh, array a buffet of adult lunchable it's different meats and cheeses uh, like i said every now and again some grapes maybe some celery and uh carrots and stuff like that depends i think i think they're more multi-dimensional now they can go with anything you want on them but uh <clears throat> since Kurt the ad i seen somebody was selling one for 120 dollars um getting prepared for the cup charcuterie board for the cup 120 dollars and i was thinking you know, 120 bucks, you could probably get, I don't know, man, 75 wings, probably two uh, draw fries, celery, blue cheese, probably cheese sticks, and maybe another uh, side. And I think you'd be filled up more. Or not with the a, price of wings these days. <laughs> I think 75, but you could still get under 120. I think that's about what it, what it would be. Or uh, you could go to a substation and get a six foot sub for that price. I just don't know. Like they're cool to have. It's a cool option, like meatballs and little smokies and finger sandwiches and chicken wings and whatever. I just don't know. 120. You paying 120 for a charcuterie board at your cup spot, Kurt? No, it just just a disclaimer. When we bring up these white people trends, we're not knocking them at like we're better than or making fun of. Uh, we partake in about or enjoy probably nine out of ten of most of these. Uh, we're just talking about the, the the trend and rise and popularity of it. Like, like you weren't seeing pictures of charcuterie boards on your Facebook and Instagram feeds until recently. So I enjoy them. I enjoy a Ritz cracker with some meat and cheese as much as the next guy. You know, I'll grab a grape sitting there, I guess. But uh, I'd rather have a tray of barbecue and some uh, Hawaiian rolls, make a little slider or something. But That's nobody's posting saying. pictures of their barbecue. Two We're just talking about barbecue. the trend and popularity. We Couple like them and we'll eat it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, hey, look, the first trend I think we did was Hey Dudes. I wore, I've been wearing Hey Dudes all weekend, all weekend in Clemson. I wore Hey I, I ain't knocking it. It's something we observed that's new. Like Kurt said, I'd rather have <clears throat> uh, King Hawaiian roll 
some pulled pork. I will not shy away. And if you got cut up pineapple on there, I'm gonna eat every one of them. I love pineapple. But it's just some it's just something new that, like you said, we hadn't seen people posting pictures of that charcuterie. There's people starting businesses making charcuterie boards. 120 bucks. That seems to be a little steep for me. Kurt, what's your take on saltine crackers? If there's saltines on the charcuterie board, what you gonna do with that? I'm more of a Ritz guy, man. I'd, I'd rather see the Ritz out there. Uh, I feel like saltine is the the worst of the uh, crackers to put meats and cheeses on. Uh, that, that's more crumpled up and put in some stew or something, right? Some soup, maybe something like yeah, that. Yeah, maybe just crush up in your soup. That's the, all I need it for. I'm not a saltine guy. Yeah, Ritz crackers is Tom Brady. I mean, ain't no doubt about it. I feel like saltines is probably Baker Mayfield. Anybody Those new season, the seasoned Ritz they got now are great. I'm going to try that. Yeah, I heard you say that. I'm going to get me some of that. I know Food Lion usually got a uh, two for two for buy one, get one, or two for a certain price. I'm going to snatch, snatch some of them up. I love Ritz crackers. Ritz crackers to me like Jiffy Cornbread. It's the best. You know, it's, a, it's got that buttery season. But anyway, like I said, uh, the charcuterie board, probably be at the cup next Saturday, walking around. If you got a good spread, you got some pepperonis, and some ham, some different kind of cheeses. I'll throw a few, couple pieces on a Ritz cracker. I'm not After this, down. we might we may be told to stay the hell away from their charcuterie boards. We were, we are not knocking them. We enjoy them very yeah, we, much. We might get some negative publicity, and that's okay. And we've been there before. So, yeah, that's just a trend we've seen. Just calling it out, no problem. If you can get one hundred twenty dollars, man, make all you can. I ain't knocking you for trying. I just don't know. Uh, that there'll ever be a day I'll, I'll give you 120. I'm not real sure I'd give you 80. Um, it's like, <laughs> it's kind of, to me, it's like, you know, it's like paying $12 at Groucho's for a soda they put in the microwave. It just ain't worth it to me. Anyway, <clears throat> let's move on talking about food. I see a lot of people raise hell about DoorDash and what the prices are DoorDash and, and how pissed off people get about food delivery. First of all, uh, I, 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 I've stated this before, there's really only three reasons for me to use DoorDash, and that is to be out of town, um, to not have a vehicle, um, mostly out of town, and being intoxicated to where you can't drive a vehicle. That's the only three things. That's the only three times I think it's reasonable, you know, to DoorDash. There's no sense in uh, me, you know, you know, Kurt. Have you ever been sitting around the house and uh, want a super sub from House of Pizza and thought, man, I'm too damn lazy to drive that three and a half miles to get it? There's nothing around here that I would I would get DoorDash for. I'm perfectly fine with driving 10 minutes to get my food. But uh, yeah, like you said, that was convenient last week because everybody, some people were still asleep. Yeah. You'd have to get certain people to move their car and all this right, woke right, them right. up to do that. So we got what? A few biscuits, got you a sweet tea, some hash browns. I can't remember exactly how much food we yeah, got. It was bucks. like 30 bucks from yeah. McDonald's. Well, that's the thing, like, you know, it was convenient. It was definitely convenient. And, and uh, you know, that's what it's all about. And me, neither one of us is going to whine about a dollar fifty added on. I think that's what it was. I think a McGriddle is a dollar, uh, a sausage McGriddle is two fifty nine. I think it was four nineteen or something like that. So it's dollar fifty, dollar sixty added on per item, maybe. But here's the thing, man. I, I seen this on there. Me and Kirk talked about this last week when we saw it. I'm going to use an easy math for you. If, the, if your meal costs $25, first of all, there's nowhere in Kershaw County that I'm not going to drive. I've driven, hell, man, I drove to Lancaster to get barbecue one time. I get the sushi off of Fort Jackson Boulevard, which is about an hour round trip. I drive, I drive to Cantina 76 downtown to get tacos on Sunday sometime. Me driving to get food has never been a problem. But let's just say this. You, you order whatever you order, and it's 25 bucks. And because of DoorDash, it costs $50. Okay. Well, you got to figure here in your brain. It's worth something not getting your lazy ass up, putting on your clothes, getting in your car, driving there, waiting for it, paying for it, waiting for them to give it to you and bring it back home. So there's $25 in there somewhere, let's just say. Well, DoorDash, DoorDash didn't invent themselves and not make any money. You know, they're not doing this because they're just uh, great humanitarians who want to make sure you got food at your house. So you got to pay them something. And then on top of that, you know, you got to pay the person something. 
the person that volunteered the DoorDash didn't, he ain't gonna do it for four hours. Hell, gas is four dollars a gallon. He's got to drive instead of your lazy ass going to the to the store, to the to the pizza place or the sub place. He's got to drive down there, stand in line, wait for your food, get back in his car, drive it to your house, bring it to you, and then so let's say ten dollars for DoorDash and ten dollars for that man. And if you tip him five dollars like a good human being, you should. It's twenty five dollars. What's the problem? You had another option. The other option is get your ass up and, and and go down there yourself. I just don't see. I've never used DoorDash at home. It was convenient this weekend twice. First, because like you said, you know we had six cars in the driveway, and there's no way to really get out. And we don't mind paying a dollar fifty extra for the item. I mean, we woke up wanting something to eat. I needed a McGriddle. I needed a McDonald's sweet tea. I would have paid 20 just for that. Um, yeah, it was so super quick. Out. It was yeah, super and, quick. And hell, uh, you know, we told Kurt it was going to be 45 minutes. Three minutes after the order was put in, the girl was picking it up. And then another three or four minutes, the whole thing took 15 minutes. It was paid for. She dropped it off at the house. Game over. We eating. We got our breakfast in. We're ready for our Saturday start. If that ain't convenience, if, if convenience ain't something that's worth it to you, uh, they shouldn't allow you to order from DoorDash. If you bitch about the cost of it, get your ass up, put your hey dudes on, drive your ass down there to the store and get it. There's no reason, you know, it's, it's simple. I've never paid DoorDash in Kershaw County because I'm not too lazy to drive to House of Pizza, to Sam Kendall's, Chili's, whatever, whatever's on the menu. Yeah, it's uh, not really necessary locally. Maybe maybe if you're elderly or something like that, I could see it. Or, but out of out of town, it was convenient. So, real convenient. And, and uh, you know, and at night, uh, we ordered some uh, mellow mushroom pizzas after the uh, Clemson baseball game, and you know they came in a timely manner. We got uh three or four different pizzas for every every you know what everybody liked, and it worked out. Don't, I mean, it's good. It's convenient. It's good. But if that you, was actually Uber Eats. The okay. Jared used for uh, pizza. Uber Eats, yeah. Y'all can uh, get in here with a coupon code if you want to. Come on, come on in the podcast. <laughs> Uber Eats, a DoorDash, whichever one's first. But yeah, Uber Eats. Okay, so you know, they brought the food. It was convenient for us. We was playing cornhole, watching uh, the March Madness. You know, still watching some of the opening a weekend, and they brought the pieces to us, and it cost a little bit. I don't know what the delivery charge was because Mel and Mushroom got that, that gold plated pizza. Anyway, I get off of that. Um, but it was convenient. And if you're looking for convenience and you're willing to pay, you got to pay the company, you got to pay the person, you know, and then you still got to pay the, the, the people that make the food. So I don't have no problem in charging whatever. You knew it going in. And if you don't want to pay it, get off your ass, go pick up your food. That brings us to our Mount Rushmore uh, pizza. There was a little discrepancy in the, you know, Kurt was going to take the bull by the horns like he did that morning. He decided he was going to order the pizza for everybody. Everybody be happy. Pizza come in. We chip in 20 bucks a piece. Go on about our business. We had one fellow who did, who uh, made it known he wanted his pizza the way he wanted his pizza. And Kurt said, no, nah, I'm not ordering the pizza that way. So anyway, the other guy took took the bull by them horns, and he decided to order the pizza. Um, because everybody, you know, we did have a vegan there as well. Kenny, he had this separate pizza. He had a, a nice pie. Um yeah, he finally got to eat something besides fries. French fries? <laughs> yeah, that man right there ate seven Poor orders God. of French fries that weekend I week, and, and, and a salad <laughs> that was just a lettuce. So it was a tough weekend for his uh, his digestive tract. It was nothing but uh, French fries and a, a ball of lettuce. But yeah, he actually got to eat a, a vegetarian uh, pizza. So that leads us to this question, and we'll close it on this. You ordered a pizza, Kurt. You got four toppings, your Mount Rushmore. If you're sitting there looking at the menu, what are the four things you want on your pizza? I'm a meat guy, man. I don't want veg. I don't even like vegetables on my pizza, man. So I'm pepperoni, bacon, sausage, uh, chicken. I like a good barbecue chicken pizza. I'm not even against uh, the Hawaiian pizza. I know that's very controversial. I don't. I don't mind the pineapple. I'm good with the Hawaiian pizza as well. So I'm. You know, simply meats. I love it. I'll be honest with you. I love the I love the Hawaiian pizza. I think it's a it's an interesting mix of that sweet uh, fruit and that uh, ham. I guess it is. I like when they make the Mexican pizza. I mean, the uh, Mexican pizza, 
not the Mexican pizza, Hawaiian pizza. Sometimes they put some peppers on there as well. I like the vegetables to a certain degree. I like onions and I like mushrooms and I like uh, some, I don't like black olives, that's useless. Uh, the biggest the biggest uh, thing that got the uh, argument started or the, the change was the need for jalapenos. I have no need for jalapenos on anything. Going in or coming out. I don't want them either way. Uh, you know, usually they'll put the heat on you and I don't want any of that. Yeah, I love uh I love the meats of pizza, meats of pizza too, man. If you give me burger, hamburger, bacon, pepperoni, I'm not a big sausage guy. You know, I like mushrooms, I like onions, you know, I'll take any of that stuff. I'll eat just about anything you bring me, but I don't want the black olives and I can do it without green peppers. Mellow mushroom puts a whole tomato on there. That's kind of weird to me. Uh, I ain't down with that. So I'll take the yeah, that, that one pizza had way too too much salad uh Topics. salad ingredients on it for me, man. You yeah. can have that. Yeah, I think that's a that's a weird thing, especially they charge you about 30 damn dollars for a piece of or 25 dollars for a pizza, and then they get weird with it. I don't need all of that, but anyway, yeah, that was an interesting uh culmination of the weekend where it went from DoorDash to circle back around to uh uh, the pizza and the order of the pizza but uh everybody's got their own thing i think most people are pretty good like you you're pretty easy to order for it's just the meat easy pizza to order for i'll eat just about anything except for that i'm not eating jalapenos on my pizza and uh i don't want no chunks of tomato either but uh good weekend uh finally got the uh the duke uh win off of our podcast uh looking forward to this week going forward um Hopefully Duke can win on Saturday, and then you'll have a, a final. You might need to go ahead and put in for Tuesday off. Uh, it's going to be a late <laughs> night. It might be a late night, Monday night, cutting down the nets, and if they can pull it off. It'd be beating North Carolina would be a phenomenal feat in the, in the, in the, in the, in the quest for the championship. Losing North Carolina again would be unbearable, I think. So I, I think – if you had the choice, would you rather somebody else go ahead and knock out North Carolina or would you want to play North Carolina? I've been thinking about that all day. It's like, I kind of, I don't know, man. I, I, I think they have a better shot against St. Peter's than they do North Carolina because even the, even when Duke beat them the first part of the year, I think I said on here, uh, North Carolina missed a lot of shots they should have made, which they made the second time against them. So I'll, I don't know. Uh, it, it'd be great to beat North Carolina on the way to the championship too. So, you know, I got some South Carolina football fans that turn North Carolina basketball fans this time of year. So I'd, I'd hear from them. So. Yeah. I'm not big on that. I'm not big on you flipping your Carolinas during the season. I hate North Carolina. I'll make that clear. I think I have made it clear. Yeah. I don't think you want to risk it though. I think you'd rather have somebody else knock North Carolina out of the way. Cause if you lose, the final game at home and then you'll, you know, the chance. And then if they I mean, if they win, you know, and win the championship, it is bad all the way around for Duke. That's a lot of noise you had to put up with from them, from them South Carolina, North Carolina fans. So uh, hopefully it doesn't come down to that. If Duke's got to lose, maybe it won't be in that, in that way. And maybe North Carolina doesn't win. Maybe Villanova will pull it out and save your life. If it, uh, if it gets to that point, but, uh, Looking forward to it. March Madness is over um, next Monday. And then we'll have Major League Baseball start up. Have to mention this, Gamecocks uh, did hire a new basketball coach. We ride with Lamont now, coach from UT Chattanooga. Had a pretty good career down there. I don't know what that translate in translates into. You never know. Sometimes you get a mid-major guy and he takes you to the ceiling. And then sometimes you get a mid-major guy like Darren Horn, and five years later, you're still in a mess. Uh, a lot of controversy on whether they should or should not fire Frank Martin. I think he had reached his peak. And, you know, five years after going to the Final Four, if you're still not making a tournament, uh, you got to make a change. Unfortunately, like every change that Ray Tanner's made, he hadn't got his candidate. He's got the third or fourth best candidate. And that's exactly what happened here. Uh, hopefully – he can do some magic, pull some St. Peter's magic out of there and get South Carolina back on track. We'll talk about that at a later date. But uh, baseball, uh, 
Major League Baseball are starting another week or so. That's good. I have a little bit to talk about. I think most of our uh, conversations and podcasts will be on pop culture and other topics at that point because baseball is kind of boring until it gets to the end. But uh, anything else, Kurt? Nothing, man. Duke keeps marching, man. Let's go. We'll be back next week getting ready for the championship. All right. We're going to come back next week. We're going to uh, we'll, we'll definitely break that down. We'll keep our eye on any uh, newsworthy notes that come across there. Appreciate y'all listening on the YouTube, on the Spotify, on the Apple Podcast. Uh, hit the keep, like. Hit the subscribe. Tell your mom. Tell your dad. Tell your grandma. Until next week, people, we are out of here. <laughs>